Hello, right, this is a quick guide to um, to get going with the Ninjam server. So I uh, did another video on how you can use Ninjam and Reaper to do um, online jamming. Um, and you can either connect to a public server or you can um, set your own server up. So here we are, here's the download page for the um, server. It's, a, it's only a small program, 64K, it's tiny. Uh, I'm on Windows, so I'm going to download that one there. And it just downloads a zip file to your computer. So create a folder on your computer and um, extract that zip file. So I've already done that here. Uh, so on my C drive, I've just created a folder called Ninjam. And I've taken the download there and extracted it into here. Um, so it's it's a pretty simple thing, really. There's an application here that does the... Um, the business and then there's configuration files that you can set up um, that tell the the server what to do so there's an example configuration file um, that comes with ninjam there's a whole lot of stuff in there but what i've done is i've made a copy of that file uh, and i've just called my file jams.cfg and, and then here i've made a few changes to uh, to get up and running so i'm going to open up this file here just quickly um, top here is the port so um, you're going to need to open up a port um, on your router if you, if you know how to do that. If you don't know how to do that, you might need to kind of look into that. And that completely depends on what type of router you've got. But um, if you know how to do that, that's that's going to be an important part we come back to later. Um, so you can adjust the port here, um, which would allow you to maybe even run multiple servers if you had them running on different ports. But anyway, we'll just go with 2049, which is the default. Um, you can specify how many people in a jam, uh, how many channels. Um, you can specify a license that comes up when you, when people join the jam, but I've just used a hash comment there to, to comment that line out so you don't get prompted for a license. Uh, I've left all that um, factory. Uh, then down here is another one that's a tricky one. Just comment out all the ones here that aren't the um, allow all. You want the allow all there, so you don't want your um, you don't want this kind of limiting uh, your friends who are connecting in's IP addresses. You kind of want that to happen back at your router. Uh, down here, usernames and passwords, so that's kind of a little bit of an example there. Um, this line that isn't commented sets the administrator password for the session. I think that star means you can do anything, um, so you can put your own username and password in there. And then um, using this line here, this kind of specifies a user, their password, and the things they can do, um, chat, set the beat per minute, etc, uh, etc. Et so I've added just a section here um, for different people. And that I want to be in my um, musical group, so you can go in here and create users and passwords here, and and put this on the end of those lines to set those permissions. Uh, so I'm just going to go with Jim and my pass, and then pretty much the rest of it I didn't touch. I think I might. You can just um, personalize the message when you join the jam. You can set the default beats per minute, etc., etc. But that's it. So that's pretty much the uh, the jams.cfg file. And then what you need to do really is just start the server and specify the config. So um, I actually created what's called a batch file, which is just a file with the .cmd extension. And if you look at that, it's very simple. It's got a um, just the path to the server executable, which is that one there, and then a space, and then the path to the my jams configuration there. Uh, now, if you did have any spaces in your name here, you'd probably want to wrap that in speech marks as well like that. Um, likewise, in fact, if we do that, that's, um, that's safe, even though we don't need to because there's no spaces there. Right, that's it. And then what you do after that is uh, double click that and it starts the server. And that's it, really. There's not much to it. Um, you can press the R button to reload the configuration. Uh, enter button shows you some options here. And you can press S, which will show you who's connected. At the moment, there's no one. So as I say, that the trick here is now is that you have to make this available um, outside on your public IP address. And then that's the IP address that you're going to give to your friends um, that they're going to type into to Reaper. So um, in my case, I've got a static IP, uh, which never changes for my internet provider. So um, that's always going to be the same for me. Um, and then internally on my computer, I've got an IP address um, on my music machine here that's, um, that's statically set as well. So I can go into my router and open up a pinhole from the outside to port 2049 uh, on this music PC. And that will let other people into, um, into the server here that's running. So uh, on my machine here, though, I'm running this on the same machine that I'm running Reaper. So I can come back into here, into Reaper, where I've got my... Um, set up here with all my instruments and routing into my Ninjam plugin and where I want to connect here I'll go file connect and um, 
these are all the servers here, but I can just type in an address in. So for me, I'm going to type in this address, which is 127.0.0.1. That, that's basically what's called a loopback address, which means look back at this at this particular computer, and then I'm specifying that port 2049. So your um, your other mates here will have a different address in here. It might be, um, I don't know, might be an address that looks like that, depending on um, what their IP address is. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to set that back to 127.0.0.1 because that's how I'm going to connect. Uh, and then I'm going to specify a username and password in that configuration file, um, which I think was my pass. And I'm going to click connect. And there we go. I'm connected to the jam. So um, if I go back to the server here, there's not, not a lot I can really see here. I can press the S button and it shows me who's connected and what IP address they're connected from. That's it really, there's not a lot more that you can do in the server. Um, it just sits in the background basically and um, proxies the connection. So there you go, that's that's the kind of a very quick overview. Um, as I say, you kind of know how to need to know how to pinhole um, a port on your firewall or router through to your machine that's running the, the Ninjam server. Um, and then as I say, you need to, to give that address out to um, the people that you want to connect. Um, that's basically it. Thanks for watching.